Hey guys, James with Esprit Model Jetty USA. We're going to talk a little bit today about how to set up your central box using the Device Explorer. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump in. First thing you're going to do is have your, your central box set up and powered. Um, go ahead and turn the central box on so we're able to, uh, to access it in Device Explorer. First thing you do is go Menu, click on Model, go to Device Explorer, and go ahead and click on that central box 200 and we're going to log into the central box. Um, and we'll go through the menus, explain what things are a little bit to you. Uh, under general settings, if we click on that in the radio, you'll see that's where the output period is. Um, you can set that depending on the equipment you're using. We typically default that to 17 or somewhere in a range of 17 to 19 milliseconds. Uh, the expander settings, this is important. This is what determines uh, how EXT ports on the device work, EXT1 specifically. Uh, if you have it configured, uh, let's say to EX bus or Jetty box, you will not be able to plug a telemetry device into that and see that back at the radio. So if you're going to be using telemetry devices and plugging those into the central box, make sure that you have that preset to telemetry input. That, when you, that way when you go and you convert pins 15 and 16 over to telemetry, and I'll show you that in a second, you'll be able to see whatever's plugged in there back at the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape, go back into the central box menu, and click on alternative pin configuration. Now this is kind of nice. Here is where you can go into the individual outputs, click on an output, and you have the ability to change that output from servo output uh, to digital output or digital input. You'll use this for head tracking devices, use this for lighting controllers, things that are looking for a single binary digital signal. So um, very important to keep that function in mind. Uh, if you need more on that, it's going to be normal. You reach out to us, send us an email at the shop here, and we can help you out. We'll go ahead and leave it set to servo. Uh, you'll also notice that it only runs pins 1 through 13 as standard change output. So you go servo, digital in, digital out. Uh, Pin 14 and pin 15, those are your convertible outputs. Uh, they can be set up to be servo output, telemetry input, and then you have those digital input and digital output, as well as being, tele being able to output EX bus. So if you were building a big scale helicopter, let's say, and you wanted to run a central box 200, a whole bunch of lights and gadgets, and still wanted to run EX bus to, let's say, your Spirit Pro Fly Barless Controller, uh, you could set either one of those outputs to EX bus, transmit EX bus specifically to that controller, and use the rest of the servo outputs for standard servo output duty, things like uh, you know scale doors and scale gear and hatches and things of that sort. We'll go ahead and leave this set, set it back to telemetry input for the next guy to come along. Remember 14 and 15 are both able to be set up that way for telemetry or servo or EX bus or digital. Um, that's what you do under the alternate pin configuration menu. Servo failsafe is just what it sounds like. Here's where you set up your failsafe setup. You can enable or disable it. Uh, you can change the delay time. Now this delay time is how long it takes from losing signal to activating your failsafe settings. Um, you can raise that. We typically, the radio defaults to 1.5. I found it's a really good amount of time. Uh, if you have a, a system that, or you're in a, in a, situation where your signal's going low and raising and going low, uh, probably run that a little bit longer if you know that you're going to be in that situation, you know, sailplane in a contest way out of the field. Um, but what you do to set up failsafe is simple. You choose the output, you click on the mode, you can change it, the modes from hold to out or off to failsafe. Uh, if you leave it on hold, it does just that. It stays in the last position entered. Out off pulls power and signal from that output. So if it's a uh, servo, it'll flag or go to a relaxed position. It, 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 you will no longer be powered up, so uh, it will be free to move on its own. And then fail safe, of course, that allows you to preset the position. What I did in this case was I set the fail safe value to a negative 100, say a throttle servo. You lose your radio link uh, receiver, takes that last command, realizes there's no additional command, moves to failsafe, and moves that servo to a closed position. Uh, very simple to understand, failsafe is found under the CB200 failsafe menu. So go ahead and jump out of that. I went a little too far, let's log back into the CB. Servo output mapping. 
Uh, now this is just like what you've done in uh, servo assignment under your standard setup menu under the uh, model setup assignment. Uh, this though will allow you to no matter what your servo assignment is in the radio this will allow you to arrange the pins the way they fit best in the unit once it's built into the aircraft. So you can go in um, if your servo assignment says that channel 1 is aileron but channel 1 won't reach aileron in the physical configuration uh, you just reassign that to the to the best fitting pin that you can making sure you match that here to what's physically plugged into the central box uh, and then you can uh, make changes as you see fit or add or subtract things as you need to uh, last two things in the menu are kind of cool. One is telemetry. If you click on telemetry, it'll give you live telemetry of what's actually happening right there at that moment on the unit. Uh, we have zero shorted outputs, temperature at 26C, uh, reading 7.4 volts on both PAC-1 and PAC-2, uh, showing 0 0.05, 0 0.06 milliamps current, um, and 12 milliamp hours on one side, 15 mAh on the other. So. Uh, that's your live telemetry. If you go into telemetry min max, that actually records the minimum input and the maximum input from that session. It allows you also to set a clear uh, a switch to clear that min max. Uh, we've used SF, so you'll notice. Let me go ahead and uh, scroll down to where you can see max current. Uh, we'll go ahead and move the servos around a little bit and see if we can't get a little more draw out of the system. Um, 1.23 amps and we'll go ahead and hit our our clear tell it yes and you'll see that drop down to 0.10 again so it's instant as soon as you hit that switch it clears that data and allows you to uh, to start fresh on each flight and you can set that from the main screen or change that from any screen you're in or while you're flying or on the flight line that's our central box 200 setup menu through device explorer if there's anything that I didn't cover or something that you missed or you have more questions on, uh, give me a call at the shop uh, or reach out via email. Thanks for uh, joining us and we'll see you next time.